Hello everyone. We are Market Recap and Product Coalition Services presenting to you a topic on battery energy storage devices. In this presentation, we will provide details on battery energy storage devices and how it will impact the power sector. The information shared during this presentation is based on multiple sources as indicated in the report description. This presentation has 68 slides and it will take around 70 minutes to finish the commentary. Let's proceed with the contents. The contents of the presentation is as listed in this slide. We will take you through battery technology, role of energy storage system, why battery energy storage system is getting popularity, what's the application, what's the cost structure, who are the players, mergers and acquisition in battery energy storage space and finally some of the key projects executed globally. In this section, we will have fundamental information about battery. Electric battery is a device which has one or more electro mechanical cell with external correction which can power up devices like mobile phones, cars, and lights. Positive terminal of the battery is called as cathode and negative terminal is called as anode. Battery operates on oxidation reduction reaction also known as redox. Redox reaction is a type of chemical reaction that involves transfer of electron between two species. The energy thus produced in the process is delivered to the outer circuit. There are two categories of battery. One is primary battery which can be used intermittently and generally such batteries are having higher densities. Example of such batteries includes zinc carbon batteries and alkaline batteries. Secondary battery is also known as rechargeable battery and uses liquid electrolyte in closed container. Lead acid batteries, nickel cadmium are example of secondary battery. Some of the types of cells are as defined in this slide. Wet cell, wet cell has liquid electrolyte and they can be chargeable or rechargeable type. These batteries are generally used in automobile and for standby application. Typical, typically nickel, cadmium or lead acid battery fall in this category. Dry cell uses paste electrolyte and has enough moisturizer to allow the current to flow. It doesn't have liquid and they are suitable for portable application. Zinc carbon battery is an example of dry cell battery. Molten salt uses molten salt as an electrolyte. They can be primary or secondary type and operates at high temperature. Sodium nickel chloride battery fall in this category. Reserve can be assembled and stored for long period. Electrolyte artillery fuses can be activated by firing gun. Water activated battery is type of reserve battery. Battery has important role in energy storage system. But before we get into battery energy storage system, let's have some understanding of energy storage technologies available in the market. Energy storage system is the general term for the technology that can be used to store energy using thermal, electromechanical or electrochemical solutions. Pump hydro, compressed air storage, mechanical flywheels, and battery energy storage are some of the examples of energy storage system. Comparison of various storage technologies are as shown in this slide. Pump hydro, compressed air storage, lithium ion, lead acid, and sodium sulfur batteries are compared considering its power and energy density. Lithium ion has highest power and energy density and that makes it ideal choice for energy storage application. Generally speaking, peak demand exists for 4 hours and lithium ion batteries discharging within 4 hours could be ideal for energy storage application. 
Further details on various technologies is as shown in this slide. Pump hydro is a cheaper option as stored water in lower pool is sent back to the higher pool when electricity demand is low. The stored water is then released during peak demand period. Pump hydro has significant investment with 80% efficiency and provides backup for 10 hours. However, energy density is low. Compressed air storage system. In this, air is pumped into the underground hole during off-peak period and during peak period, air is released back to the facility where it is heated and then expanded and used for the power generation. Compressed air storage has efficiency up to 70%. Molten salt technology uses rock, salt and water which are heated and kept in insulated environment. Whenever energy is needed, thermal energy is released by pumping cold water onto hot rock which generates steam that is fed to the steam turbine. Thermal energy can be also used for heating or cooling the building instead of generating the electricity. Lithium ion batteries is now used for 90% grid storage application due to high efficiency, high power density and lightweight. Hornsdale Power Reserves in Southern Australia uses lithium ion batteries to stabilize the grid with energy as received from wind farm. The 100 megawatt facility is built by Tesla and is used to power up 30,000 homes. Lead acid batteries are first battery technology used for energy storage application. However, they are not so popular due to lower power density and short life. Flow batteries are better alternative to lithium ion batteries and are currently catering to less than 5% requirement. Flow batteries have lower density and have long life cycle, which makes them ideal choice for continuous power application. Solid state batteries have higher energy densities and much less prone to fires as compared to lithium ion batteries. However, technology is relatively more expensive as compared to lithium ion batteries. Fuel cell can produce hydrogen when electricity is cheap and then generated hydrogen is used during peak demand. This technology needs less footprints and delivers high energy density with no emission. Flywheel are not suitable for long term storage but are suitable for load leveling and load shifting application. Flywheels have long life cycle, high energy density low maintenance cost and quick response needs. Comparing CapEx investment, pump hydro and compressors are capital intensive technologies. Energy storage technology typically excel power or energy but not both. Flywheel as well as CAAC technology have negative correlation between cost of energy and power. Hydrogen storage technology is very expensive but cost likely to decline due to technological advancement. Battery technologies like NAS and Redox have similar cost reduction as mentioned. This figure indicates application as classified based on output, usage period, power requirements and energy storage devices. Energy storage devices are indicated as per usage period, power generation and system and or network operation. Storage battery is one technology which can be applied for power generation, transmission, distribution and consumption point. Having seen various storage technology, let's focus our attention on battery energy storage technology. Some of the most common popular battery technology are as listed in this slide. 
Lithium ion technology is widely used. It allows several charge and discharge operation and are generally used for laptop, mobile and cameras. Lead acid are traditional batteries and are relatively inexpensive. Lead acid batteries are generally used for control system, backup power and grid storage devices. Typically 65% of world battery are lead acid battery. These batteries has low energy density and short cycle life. Sodium sulfur and zinc bromine batteries are generally used for storing energy from renewable sources like solar and wind. Flow battery are quite large and are used to store energy from renewable sources. This slide analyzes the technology from investment efficiency and limitations point of view. Three colors are used to get the feel of high, medium or low impact or intensity. Lithium ion is the most expensive option around $600 to $1200 per kilowatt hour as compared to vanadium redox or sodium sulfur or zinc bromine. In terms of life cycle, VRP and zinc bromine offer highest life as compared to lithium ion and sodium sulfur. In terms of round trip efficiency, lithium ion has highest efficiency up to 95%. Sodium sulfur is very close to lithium ion and VRP and zinc bromine offers medium range. In terms of environmental impact, VRB has highest impact, whereas NAS has medium impact and lithium ion and zinc bromine has lowest impact. Energy density could be issue where real estate is high. Lithium ion has high energy density, whereas NAS and zinc bromine has medium energy density, whereas VRB has low energy density. In the next section, we will study battery energy storage system characteristics to understand its suitability for energy storage applications. Some of the parameters which define BESS characteristics are as listed in this slide. First one, round trip efficiency. Round trip efficiency means amount of energy that can be discharged in relation to the amount of energy put into the energy storage system. This accounts for energy lost during charging and discharging. Typical value ranges from 60 to 95%. Second parameter is response time. Response time is the amount of time needed to go from standby mode to full output mode. Typical value varies from 10 to 20 milliseconds. Ramp rate indicates the rate at which storage power can be varied. Ramp rate for the, fa for the batteries can be faster than 100% variation within one to few seconds. Energy retention time means amount of time that a storage system retain its charge. This is important feature as some of the storage self discharges or dissipate energy when not in use. Energy density. This feature is important considering space constraint. This is in reference to the amount of energy that can be stored for a given amount of area, volume or mass. Power density indicates amount of power that can be delivered for a given amount of area, volume or mass. Safety is related with electricity, material use and process involved in storage system. Lifespan is measured in cycles. Battery 
depth of discharge refers to the amount of battery capacity that has been utilized. The deeper the battery discharge, shorter the expected life. Deep cycles are often 80% or more. Ambient temperature is an important consideration as battery loses its capacity in hotter climate. This slide indicates some of the parameters which needs to be considered for selecting the batteries. These parameters are performance requirement, maintenance requirement, power component and cost, battery cell and module cost, grade and utility requirement, depth of discharge, cycle life, efficiency, safety, technology and if possible company track record, ambient temperature, installation infrastructure, energy density and applications and policy requirements. These parameters are important consideration for selecting battery for any application. The next section is about identifying PESS applications for energy transmission, distribution and load network. PESS can be applied for generation, transmission and distribution point. Let's review some of the applications in more depth in next few slides. This slide lists some of the applications of battery energy storage for the power sector. Demand side management. Energy stored is used to reduce the electricity demand during peak demand period. This is done by recharging the batteries during off peak period and utilizing its energy during peak demand. This can be implemented by the customer or the utilities company. Electric service reliability can be improved during power outage. Power reliability can be ensured by integration of energy storage with renewable sources. Energy arbitrage, which means buying the electricity when prices are low and selling when the prices are high. Fast response frequency regulations allows fast response by enhancing the capacity to maintain system frequency. Remote island or villages which are completely isolated from the grid can be electrified with renewable power generation when used along with the energy storage system. Similarly, off-grid system like straight lights, mountain top microwave repeaters for the individual homes or the whole community can be benefited with the energy storage devices. Battery storage are used in tandem with renewable energy to provide predictability to the energy supply. Adding capacities through battery storage can reduce the demand for generation and distribution capacity in the wholesale electricity marketplace. Transformer upgrades or transmission line infrastructure infra infrastructure investment could be deferred as battery can compensate the capacity. This slide lists technical requirements for various application. Energy transaction or arbitrage application need power system around 500 megawatt and discharge time less than an hour with minimum 250 cycles per year. Energy storage can improve generation by adding capacity and such storage could be around 500 megawatt and discharge duration from 2 to 6 hours and operating cycles less than 100 per year. For frequency regulation, energy storage plays important role by boosting capacity whenever required in short span of time to maintain the grid frequency. Such applications 
needs 10 to 40 megawatt with discharge between 15 minutes to an hour and the likely operation per year could be around 250 to 10,000 cycles. Battery storage acts as a reserve under sudden interruption in power supply. Generally, such storage are up to 100 megawatt with discharge duration from 15 minutes to one hour and minimum cycles up to 50 per year. Power conversion system of energy storage are operated at unity power factor to maintain the grid reactance. Such storage capacity could be 10 MVAR. Under catastrophic failure of grid, storage can energize the transmission system or power plant auxiliary services. Such application is called as black start and they generally need 5 to 50 megawatt power system with discharge time duration from 15 minutes to 1 hour and minimum cycles around 20 per year. Load ramping is an important application where energy storage can be used to cope up with the demand in the specific areas. Such storage system up to 100 megawatt with target discharge from 15 minutes to one hour are used for such application. Rather than investing in building transmission infrastructure, battery storage near load center can defer such investment as well as meet the demand. Storage up to 100 megawatt are added for such applications having discharge duration up to 8 hours and minimum cycle of 50 per year. When the transmission infrastructure do not cope up with the demand, it results into energy congestion. Energy storage can provide relief against energy congestion. Energy storage up to 100 megawatt with discharge duration from 1 to 4 hours and operating cycle 50 to 100 per year are used for such application. Battery storage can be located where it is significantly expensive to invest in transmission and distribution infrastructure. And such grid congestion can be addressed with battery storage system at the distribution center. Storage system size varies between 500 kilowatt to 10 megawatt with the discharge time between 1 to 4 hours and minimum operating cycles around 50 to 100 are generally used for such applications. Energy storage can help to maintain the power quality as the power quality deteriorates in the event of short circuit. Typical storage system from 100 kilowatt to 10 megawatt with the discharge time from 10 seconds to 15 minutes and the operating cycles per year varies between 10 to 200. Customer can manage the charges for their demand by using energy storage devices. The typical size varies between 50 kilowatt to 10 megawatt with the discharge time between 1 to 4 hours and minimum operating cycles varies between 50 to 500 in a year. Battery energy storage can be sized in power that is megawatt or energy that is megawatt hour. Megawatt sizing is suitable for black start and for the frequency regulation application, whereas megawatt hour is suitable for renewable integration, peak shaving, and for microgrid application. The formulas for both the calculations is as shown in this slide. For black start or frequency regulation application, simply multiply frequency gain with governor drop and system frequency. So for example, if the gain is 41.66, governor drop is 4% and the frequency is 60 Hertz, then 100 megawatt will be derived by multiplying 
all these factors. If you are sizing the energy storage for microgrid application then the calculation changes as the game is about how long battery storage can support the connected load the formula for storage capacity calculation is multiplying power rating with duration required and then divide it by depth of discharge and battery efficiency so if the total power power needed is 100 megawatt and depth of discharge is 4 hours then divide it by depth of discharge which is typically 80 percent and battery efficiency which is assumed as 95 percent that will result into 263 megawatt hour Frequency regulation is the process in which frequency is maintained at the nominal value irrespective of whether load increases or decreases. In the first figure, it shows sudden fall in frequency and then it slowly restores to normal value. In the second figure, it indicates as primary frequency control fails, secondary frequency control kicked in and the frequency is resumed to the normal level at much faster rate the real-time data of battery energy storage for example battery charge effective power system frequency is communicated to transmission system operator which puts BESS in operation to regulate frequency as and when required the figure on the left indicates solar energy variance during clear day and during cloudy day and the figure below it indicates pv installation with battery storage which basically flattens the curve same is true for wind turbine generation the energy production is low when the wind doesn't blow or even when the wind speed is more than 25 meter per second turbines are disabled in both the cases energy production is unpredictable and inconsistent the ess can help to improve wind energy dispatch by reducing forecast error and improving the utilization of transmission capacity the ess can be used by system operator for providing ancillary services to mitigate the variability and uncertainty of power on the grid side peak shaving ensures reduction in demand whenever network capacity is stressed peak shaving differs investment in network expansion or network reinforcement now one way of dealing with peak shaving is by getting into peak leveling leveling means the process of shifting the demand away from peak hours to off peak hours customer gets incentives to shift the consumption to hours of the day when the tariff are low behind the meter energy storage devices allows load leveling without any changes to the consumer load profile Installing energy storage at the consumption point will ensure lower energy consumption, especially during peak hours, complies with emission regulation as well as avoid power blackout. Battery energy storage system has numerous contributions towards reliable operation of microgrid. BESS based microgrid provide frequency regulation, demand side management, and help to integrate multiple smart grid technologies. This slide summarizes various storage technologies and its application. As you can see, BESS makes best case for most of the application. BESS is used for maintaining power quality as well as meeting transmission and distribution norms. 
lead acid battery is used for power supply over short duration of time for ups and tnd application whereas lithium ion advanced lead acid nas and flow batteries are used for longer interruption in power supply lithium battery is used for short duration as well as long duration of power supply next section is about components involved with the ess and its cost this slide lists components of battery energy storage system the battery system consists of several battery packs and multiple batteries interconnected in order to get target voltage and current battery management system consists of controls for proper operation of each cell and ensure system works well within voltage current and temperature limit battery system is connected to inverter to con convert power to ac power conversion system is generally grouped in conversion unit including all the auxiliary services needed for the proper monitoring energy management system monitors energy flow according to the specific application of bess lastly there is a transformer which connects to the load or to the grid cost per kilowatt of batteries are defined in two different ways one way is cost per kilowatt or megawatt which is installation cost of the system divided by the instantaneous output rating of the system another way is to define as cost of the system divided by the projected energy output cost of the system can also be defined as installation cost which includes cost of the battery balance of supply cost plus engineering procurement and construction cost level s cost includes cost to design construct and utilize battery energy storage system over the course of useful life when bss is compared with alternative energy generation like solar or wind the level s cost of storage is used This slide shows the average battery pack and cell prices from the year 2013 till year 2010 as per Bloomberg NEF. Lithium ion battery pack prices which were dollar 1100 per kWh in the year 2010 which has fallen 89% in real terms to dollar 137 per kWh in 2020. as per sources leading battery manufacturers are enjoying margin up to 20% and utilization of 85% which is key to reduce cell and battery pack prices adoption of solid state batteries could drive down the manufacturing cost by 40% of the current lithium ion battery as per bloomberg nfp this reduction will come from saving in bill of material and in the cost of production equipment and the adoption of new high energy densities cathode it is necessary to establish supply chain for key materials such as solid electrolyte which is currently used in lithium ion batteries lithium ion battery pack prices may be reduced to dollar 58 per kwh by year 2030 as per statista this slide benchmark the battery capital cost for 1 megawatt per 1 megawatt hour considering cost of battery pack pcs energy management system epc and development cost and also cost of connecting to grid as indicated in this slide significant price reduction likely to occur till year 2020 for you the price reduction although is to the tune of 67% on battery pack however 
considering contribution due to PCS, balance of supply, energy management system, EPC, overhead, grid connection, and project margins, the net price reduction limits to 20%. Economic benefits of battery energy storage is dependent on several parameters as indicated in this slide. Market related parameters like energy prices and the interest rate will provide overall opportunity size. Battery storage will come a large part of CapEx investment and also OPEX in relation to the battery maintenance, power conversion equipment are size as per energy storage equipment efficiency of the battery and the conversion device which includes efficiency of rectifier inverters and storage devices is likely to have impact on the levelized cost of energy storage system design parameters for example peripherals lifetime depth of discharge and system temperature need to be considered as it will impact the cost of energy storage. The consumer load in terms of demand and load curve will indicate the overall feasibility of having energy storage system after considering every parameter. Two battery technology which are extremely viable for energy storage application are as listed in this slide. Lithium ion battery which can discharge in six hours has average life of 10 to 15 years, round trip efficiency up to 85% which degrade annually and provides higher power density but there are safety concerns. The other technology is a flow battery have discharge time up to eight hours, but the flow battery has efficiency limited to 75% unlimited life. And thankfully it do not impose safety concern. The formula to estimate level is cost of storage is as mentioned in this slide. LCOS reflects total cost of battery energy storage divided by the energy it is projected to provide over the course of useful life. LCOS includes all the installation cost, operational expenditures such as maintenance cost and the battery degradation over lifespan. Lithium ion technology for PESS can be applied for behind the meter and for the front of the meter application, whereas flow batteries are mostly suitable for front of the meter application. That's why flow batteries are mostly offered for wholesale market, transmission and distribution network storage, and for the utility storage application. Batteries used for front of the meter application had the LCO is around $1.165 to $325 per megawatt hour and when combined with solar PV, LCOS remained at $102 to $139 per megawatt hour in the year 2019. LCOS for behind the meter application remained at $223 to dollar 1042 per megawatt hour and when used for commercial and infrastructure applications lcos becomes dollar 223 to dollar 384 per megawatt hour this slide represent payback period for battery energy storage used for peak clipping and for demand charge management application. The estimated payback period is considering four hours and two hours discharge. Capital cost, demand charges, and discharge duration of battery play a significant role in providing feasibility or economics for battery energy storage system. Two hours discharge battery has relatively better payback as compared to four hour discharge battery 
as shown in this particular slide. In our next section, we will see various business model to promote energy storage technologies. This slide shows the grid storage value chain according to network function, power market, and duration of use. As discussed earlier, storage is used at generation, system operator, network operator, wholesale market, and also at the end user point. The influencer and the purchaser are, are different at various stages of value chain. The new trend in the power sector is driving new rules for the business. In our next slide, we will see some of the business model which will push energy storage technologies considering such trends. This slide shows ownership model for energy storage. The business model varies from serving contract without owning the energy storage asset to complete ownership of the asset. The need and the preference of the users at the value chain determines the right option of the business model. Wholesale market is owned by utility, IPP and utility service provider. Substation could be owned by utility or IPP owner. The demand is also met by ESCO owners. End use customers are owned by customer or ESCO company, IPP or utility company. Third party ownership. In this option, storage system is owned and operated by third party based on specific contractual agreements. This model is like purchase price agreement, which is general contractual term towards off-taker holding dispatcher rights for charging and discharging of the energy storage system. Seller generally gets fixed payment and the variable payment based on the operation and maintenance value. The seller is supposed to guarantee power availability and efficiency of the battery. Another business model could be outright purchase and full ownership. This is very straightforward business model where owner right away purchase the battery energy storage system. This means huge investment in capex cost and the maintenance related activities could be outsourced. Next model is electric cooperative approach. Investor owned utilities and electric cooperatives have similar energy storage needs. However, they differ on account of ownership, governance, financial structure, as well as infrastructure and customer demographics. IOU are generally funded by the investor and generate profit for shareholders. Cooperative utilities are not profit organization and decision to electrify could be part of national goal towards electrification. Cooperative utilities could provide distribution or generation and transmission services or everything. Distribution cooperatives are responsible for delivering electricity to members whereas transmission and distribution network sends bulk power to distribution cooperation. In short, the entity benefiting from energy storage services is key consideration in selecting right business model. Next section, we will review market, market drivers, challenges and key players. Some of the market drivers for battery energy storage system is as mentioned in this slide. The biggest reason why battery energy storage system is more feasible now than in past is because of significant improvement in cost and performance. 
price of lithium ion fell by 80% since year 2010 and battery performance has improved significantly. Battery storage are used for grid modernization as the share of renewable increases. BESS helps to maintain resilience in the situation of bad weather, gaining penetration and improving the efficiency of the system. Wider support for higher renewable and less em emission energy is also driving the demand for battery storage system. Battery energy storage has better transient response as compared to traditional generator. BEAS participation in wholesale market means meeting frequency regulation norms, balance between fast ramping and slow ramping resources, and better grid parameters. Financial incentives in the form of refunding or tax saving or encouragement through feed-in tariff revenue generation is also driving the demand for energy storage. Desire for energy self-sufficiency in residential and commercial and infrastructure sector demand storage deployment and lastly renewable plus storage helps to reduce energy import improve generation mix enhance reliability and resiliency of the system and helps to transition towards environmental goal meeting decarbonization norms There are various challenges to implement battery energy storage system as indicated in this slide. Inaccurate perception of high cost can block battery technology from being considered as the solution site. As the technology is new, technical specifications of battery energy storage are still evolving, which delays standardization, add complexity, and results into additional cost. Energy storage need to be classified as generation, load, or transmission and distribution so as to optimize use of flexible option. It is important to have policy for structure rates for energy storage as this will focus the market towards energy arbitrage which is necessary to foster wholesale energy market. Energy storage need to be defined in terms of assigning value with respect to application and compensating providers accordingly. Defining fast acting storage is critical for wide commercialization. Global battery usage as per application for the year 2017 is as shown in this slide. The most common use for battery storage is frequency regulation, which is close to 50%, followed by reserve capacity, which is 9.4%, and then bill management, which is close to 8.4%. These three applications contribute to 65 to 70%, and rest contributes to 30 to 35%. The battery storage market forecast is as shown in this slide. As per Wood McKenzie, global energy storage capacity could grow at compound annual growth rate CAGR of 31% to 741 gigawatt hour of cumulative capacity by year 2030. Front of the meter will continue to dominate annual deployment and will account for up to 70% of annual total capacity addition by the end of decade. US maintain its pole position and will make up over 49% or 365 gigawatt hour of global cumulative capacity by year 2030. US front of the meter market is set to surge through 2021 due to significant short-term resources planned before slowing slightly through 2025. Beyond 2025, growth will become steadier as the wholesale market revenue streams grows 
and utility investment normalizes. The market will reach KGAR of 36% over the coming decades with cumulative capacity installation approaching to 300 gigawatt hour. China comes next and the expected to have exponential growth in storage capacity. China will account for 21% or 153 gigawatt hour of global cumulative capacity by the end of decade. The projected growth rate as per Bloomberg New Energy Finance is as indicated in this slide. This slide is specific to the growth countries where such trend will dominate relatively as compared to the rest part of the world. This slide shows historical technology share till the year 2016. Declining cost of lithium ion battery has increased its share. Just over a period of five years, the battery storage capacity has increased from 0.25 gigawatt to 1.62 gigawatt. The business case for the installation of large scale and small scale battery energy storage requires energy policy. This slide recommends some of the policies reforms which may spur the investment towards energy storage business. Energy policy need to reflect technical capability of battery energy storage system for frequency regulation. This would mean grid code need to be updated for the delivery of frequency regulation by means of various generation, load, and storage configuration. This may also help small participants such as battery energy storage operators and prosumer to offer ancillary services. Second recommendation is in relation to distribution grid, which can avoid network congestion and improve power quality by ensuring performance as per grid code. Third recommendation is penalizing utility grid operator whenever they are unable to meet the forecast and incentivizing the energy storage system via capacity market. This policy will avoid forecast error, network congestion, and ensure ramping of storage during peak demand. Competitive bidding process and locating the energy storage at a place where it makes more sense rather than utilizing conventional transmission network will ensure lowest energy cost for the consumer. Instead of diesel generator, battery energy storage system can be used to supply backup power and ancillary services such as microgrid application. As per Fortune Business Insight reports released on 2nd of November 2020, the battery energy storage market size is likely to be 19.77 billion US dollar by the year 2027. The estimated KGAR for the time period mentioned is likely to be 20.4%. Some of the top players are Siemens, LG Chem, VRV Energy, Fluence, Total, BNV, ABB, AF Energy, GE Energy Finance, Hitachi Chemical, and Hitachi ABB. Some of the big investment for the year 2019 are as listed in this slide. German company Sonon is formed as a result of investment from Shell, GE Venture, Munich Venture, and Inven Capital. Together, they raised 169 million. Pika Energy is formed with the investment from Generac Power System, Clean Energy, CEI Venture, and Main Venture Fund. There is $8.5 million. Primus Power is formed with the investment from Chrysalix Venture, Anglo-American Metador Capital. They invested in flow battery by raising $106 million. 
Vinox Energy is formed with the investment from Vantage Point Capital and Starwood Energy Group. There is 193 million US dollar. Long duration, long flow battery company Malta Energy is formed with the investment from Breakthrough Energy Venture, Alpha Lava, Concord New Energy Group. They invested 26 million US dollar. Form Energy in same category is formed with the investment from Breakthrough Energy, the engine and prelude venture there is nine million dollar student energy is formed with the investment from nxt venture breakthrough energy venture and evoke innovations quantum scape which is based on solid state technology is formed with the investment from breakthrough energy venture volkswagen Kleiner, perkins and kosla ventures there is 297 million dollar Ferris Energy which is Chinese company is formed with the investment from Industrial Bank Company Dongxing Security China Five Fund Suzhou Asset Management they raised 815 million dollar Skio Matrix is formed with the investment from IDG Capital Hua Yung Capital Meridian Capital and Ding Kiang Capital. There is 307 million. Investment continues in 2020 in spite of slowdown due to COVID. Virtual capital funding is up by 78% in quarter 3 20 as compared to previous year. Corporate funding for first nine months up by 62% as compared to same time period in 2019. However, VC funding down by 25% in the first nine months of 2020 as compared to same period of 2019. Top 10 players in battery energy storage system for the year 2019 uh, are as indicated in this slide. Fluence, Nextera, BYD Capital, Samsung, Parker Hennafin, GE Energy, LJ Came, Greensmith Energy, Comed, NEC Energy System are the top players as per energy acuity. Why SG Solar released top player in the energy sector as Nextera, Toshiba, Tesla, Sonan, General Electric, Siemens, Panasonic, ABB, Johnson Controls, and Fluence. Next few slides provide some of the project's references for battery energy storage system. Anza Electric Corporation used 4 megawatt battery lithium ion for transmission and distribution deferral. Supplier is Samsung. Kotzbu Electric Car Association installed 1.22 megawatt lithium ion battery with 2.7 megawatt wind farm for grid stability application. KU Island installed 52 megawatt hour 100 megawatt hour and 70 megawatt hour battery energy storage for peaking application samsung and tesla are the supplier bmc installed 840 kilowatt hour battery for microgrid projects ncmc installed 1 megawatt hour and 735 kilowatt hour for a microgrid project the battery is supplied by Tesla and Power, Se Power Secure. Leung has a installed 100 megawatt battery storage system for microgrid application. ABB supplied two units of 200 kilowatt grid projects in Indonesia. United Power Corporation installed 16 megawatt hour lithium ion battery for demand management. Batteries are supplied by Tesla. Pentera Electric installed 13.8 megawatt battery for residential application.
British utility national national grid installed 12.5 megawatt hour battery for grid balancing application. Fairbank Alaska used 27 megawatt nickel cadmium battery for black start application. Egnomos used 20 megawatt lithium ion battery for frequency regulation application for renewable integration. Watsila supplying 100 megawatt for renewable integration projects in Southeast Asia. Keppel installing 7.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery for grid stability application and Vistra installed 300 megawatt lithium ion battery for renewable projects in California. It's you can see the battery storage is becoming ideal choice for transmission distribution and load consumption center we hope you find the information shared with you useful should you need any more information please contact us at this email id being a member of mrpcs thank you